My name is Jeff Catlin from EdgeCore Networks, and today we're going to talk about something really cool. We're going to talk about open networking. So my company makes networking gear, and we're going to, I'm going to kind of take you through uh, open networking and open compute, kind of a high level where we've been the last few years, where we're going, uh, where we are today, and uh, where I think we're going to go uh, in the near future here. Okay, so we got about 15 minutes worth of um, material here, and so we'll make our way through this. So, open networking, uh, as far as open compute, started uh, in May of 2013. So the first meeting for the networking group is at MIT in Massachusetts. And so we've been at this now for not even four years. Hooray! So in four years, we've been working, all of us working, to build an ecosystem around open networking. So let's take a look at, at what we've accomplished over those last four years at a high level. So in, in the first uh, products we had in early uh, 2013 or 14, started off with very standard 10 gig topper rack switches. Okay, one RU switches, 10 gig topper rack. Quickly that moved on to 40 gig switches for spine layer and also topper rack. That uh, very quickly in the next couple of years led to 100 gig modular chassis. So I don't know how many of you uh, know this out there, but there's currently uh, three chassis designs that are uh, open through open compute. There's a 128 port, 100 gig chassis from Facebook. There's a 256 port, 100 gig chassis from EdgeCore, and a 512 port, 100 gig chassis from EdgeCore. So in the first couple of years of open networking, we advanced very rapidly from simple 10 gig topper rack switches to uh, 100 gig modular chassis. Soon after that, we started to uh, split out and push open networking into different areas. So uh, as of last year, you saw contributions on Wi-Fi access points. Yes, there are uh, Wi-Fi access points that are open networking devices, completely open hardware designs, and an ecosystem of software partners. PoE switches were contributed as well at that same time frame to power those access points. Uh, there was data center interconnect switches, DCI switches introduced last year, so as you start to see open networking move more uh, out of the data center into different environments. And also last year there was a one gig pawn OLT devices introduced. So that kind of brings us up to today. So what are we seeing uh, at Summit this year for networking products? Well, we're seeing 64 port 100 gig switch designs. So there's a couple designs out there and we'll talk about those. 64 ports of 100 gig, okay, in a uh, standalone box. A very high performance box, boxes now. We have programmable ASICs, so there's uh, Barefoot Networks, uh, has got boxes around here, so they have a fully programmable ASIC through P4 programming language, you guys are may be familiar with that, so that's certainly a, a highlight of the show this year. We have 25 gig topper rack switches that have been contributed, uh, EdgeCore has contributed a design as well as uh, Ajima has a contributed design for that as well. And also we've done addition of, uh, additional Wi-Fi access points this year. So we keep uh, advancing open networking as far as uh, hardware designs, not only for data center, uh, but for other use cases as well, uh, as far as Wi-Fi, PoE, data center interconnect. So there's a lot of activity going on in just four years time frame of where we've, we've come from. So in that same time frame, we've done a lot of software work in open compute. Uh, one of the first things we realized is we needed a way to install software on this, uh, these white box or bare metal hardware platforms. So the ONI installer environment uh, was contributed by Cumulus. After that, we needed something to install. So there was a Linux distribution that was decided on to be the OCP Linux distribution. That's Open Network Linux. Now we've got that going. Now we need a way to uh, normalize the switching infrastructure on a platform. So we need to normalize the underlying ASICs and SDKs uh, from vendors so we can write generic software that runs on top of these platforms. That's where the switch abstraction interface, or SAI, uh, came from. And Microsoft and Dell were really instrumental in pushing this forward. So we have that today. Open optical monitoring was a recent thing. Uh, some customer demand on how do we monitor our plug-in modules in our devices and know the temperature and the launch power status and those kind of things. Now we have a standard way of monitoring uh, the plugins that go in the switches. And finally, we kind of fast forward to today and we have fully uh, open source through open compute network operating systems. We have Sonic, um, as you know, as a package and we have a package that's called FlexSwitch as well. So these are our you know, full function layer three 
uh, NOSes that can be installed on open network hardware today. So we run the gamut of hardware platforms and also for software, everything from the installer to full-fledged uh, operating systems that we have today. So what does the ecosystem look like of design contributions or design contributors? So at, at the top here of this slide, we have, uh, for the most part, silicon providers. And these are the guys that are active in open compute and have actually contributed specifications or hardware designs to open compute. In the middle of this slide, you have my company and other companies that do the same type of work where they produce uh, the products. And the companies in the middle here also contribute specifications, complete design packages to open compute. At the bottom, you have uh, operators which are very active in open compute. So they're either contributing specifications on how to design a product or, in the case of like Facebook, complete design packages for a networking product such as the wedge switch. So we have a very healthy hardware ecosystem um, that's ongoing here. At Summit this year, we saw uh, companies such as Marvell joining uh, Open Compute, so we look for contributions from them in the future. So the hardware ecosystem continues to grow and grow and get healthier and healthier just in four years. Software ecosystem, we, we kind of went over this already, but at the top of this, we have all the OCP software pieces that are available today. So again, we have the ONI installer and the software abstraction interface. At the top, we have the, uh, the Linux distribution, FlexSwitch, and Sonic as the network operating systems. The bottom of this slide, we have uh, different network operating systems from companies that are offered to run on top of white box or bare metal OCP hardware. And there's a long list of commercial software offerings here. The most recent, um, an announcement today, I believe, is from Arista Networks, so a very notable announcement here. They um, announced that they're decoupling their EOS software in some form from their underlying hardware and going to make their uh, BGP, uh, portion of at least their software, run on top of OCP or uh, generic hardware design. So the software ecosystem, very healthy, continues to expand uh, just as recently as today with announcements from companies such as Arista. Okay, so very important announcements going on there. So now I have to pay some bills and talk about my company's product. So at Summit this year, what are we contributing um, to Summit? So one of our designs we're contributing is a 64 port, 100 gig switch. Uh, this is, uh, we're showing this in our booth. So it's a two RU design, uh, very cost effective design based on Tomahawk 2 silicon from Broadcom. Supports all the standard CPUs we've offered on all of our platforms to date. So there's ARM, there's x86, there's Core IQ. CPU options, and it's a very cost-effective design, single PCB board, fileless design like all our other designs. So 64 ports of 100 gig in a, a 2RU uh, switch package. Also, we've contributed a 25 gig top of rack switch to go along with our increasing spine layer type packages. So this product is uh, 48 ports of 25 gig for downlinks into the servers and 600 gig uplinks for connections into the spine layer that could be made up of such products as that 64 port 100 gig switch. We also contributed additional access points, Wi-Fi access points. So last year we made the initial contributions of uh, three access points based on Broadcom Silicon. This year we're contributing two more designs for Wi-Fi access points. These are based on Qualcomm Silicon. So we're starting to push open Wi-Fi uh, into different offerings of silicon so customers have choice of silicon they, uh, they use in their open Wi-Fi access points. So one thing you may not be aware of, there's a subgroup in the networking group called the CBW group, so Campus Branch and Wireless Group. So this was formed last year to help push open networking principles out into new markets for campus and enterprise. Uh, this is kind of a snapshot of the ecosystem of partners today that uh, are active in the CBW group. So we have uh, some equipment providers, uh, Edgecore and uh, Ajima, and we have some uh, software partners, SnapRoute, Bennu Networks, Mojo, and uh, companies such as AT&T and, and Ubuntu participating in this as well. So you start to see open networking come out of the data center and move towards the campus and enterprise environment and a healthy ecosystem of partners already forming within a year in here. We did a demonstration last night, if, if you guys were able to attend at the Delta facility, uh, to show off 
the, the ecosystem of partners in the uh, CBW group and uh, the different things that the company showed. So there was two hardware providers with switches, POE switches, an edge core switch, and an Ajima switch. The access points were all uh, to date provided uh, through edge core, and they're all open access points. And so each uh, software provider had their own solution which runs on top of this open access point with they, which they were demonstrating last night. So there was solutions from uh, Canonical, Ubuntu, there were solutions from AT&T, solutions from Bennu Networks and Mojo. So you're starting to see a lot of interest here and a lot of traction going forward in open networking uh, for campus and enterprise environments as well. A couple other platforms which we are uh, showing here uh, to kind of give you an understanding of where we're going with open networking in the future. Uh, the first platform here is a packet optical switch. So this switch combines standard 100 gig interfaces with different optical uh, types of technologies and interfaces on the front end. So it's 16 ports of standard 100 gig um, ethernet and then there's eight module slots. Each one of these module slots uh, could have more standard 100 gig ethernet or could have coherent optical technologies in there. So we have partners that are providing uh, DSPs and ACOs to make a uh, complete solution for coherent optics. We have partners like Acacia, who's uh, providing a, a complete coherent DCO package that was slide into this platform. So a very uh, flexible platform we feel going forward. Uh, we're gonna open this up through one of these communities and it's, uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of innovation happening on the front end of this design for optical uh, type connections going forward. So this is something you'll see us pushing on more as time goes on as more optical type uh, connections, whether for data center interconnect or for carrier networks for their long reach needs. Another device we're showing over here is a, a GPON device. So this is a 10 gig uh, OLT device. This is based on a specification that AT&T pushed through OCP Telco Group uh, last year. Uh, so I believe this is the first instantiation of that product being shown. We're showing it over there at our booth. So again, this just shows the diversity of the open network, open networking platforms that not only we're developing, but others here as well and that are being consumed by the community as we go forward. So uh, this product, a lot of interest in here for uh, carrier telco environments as they uh, upgrade their GPON networks and try to get away from the vertically oriented boxes that they're using today. Okay, so that's kind of a glimpse into the future of uh, where we're going. So in addition to those platforms, you know, where are we going in the future at, at a high level? So. I think in open compute a year from now, you're definitely going to see uh, some contributions based on 400 gigabit Ethernet. So that's coming. Um, we'll see designs uh, throughout the course of uh, this year's being announced and next year. And I think you'll see uh, contributions uh, being made in that area very soon, uh, next year, probably by summit time frame. Uh, programmability is another big thing. We saw the first uh, programmable ASICs from Barefoot Networks that's here, I think you'll see more from them, and I think you'll see more from, from other vendors with programmability going forward. So uh, the programmability, once it's unleashed and people understand the potential and the use cases of that, I think that's gonna keep building and move forward as we go on. And I think open uh, optical networking, as we showed in that packet optical switch that we're showing here, I think uh, optical networking will continue to evolve in open compute as well over the next year or two years. So I think that's where, at a high level, that's where we're going. Of course, we'll do more uh, Wi-Fi and campus type designs at, uh, along the way, as, as well as those three uh, situations there. Outside of open compute, there's the TIP project, which you could be aware of. So this is the uh, telecom infra project. So I think they're gonna be focused more of delivering um, uh, internet connectivity to underserved portions of the world. So they'll be focused more on the cellular and the Wi-Fi aspects of how to deliver that service uh, to some of these regions and, and people throughout the world. With that, they'll have to backhaul uh, that type of, of all new traffic. So there'll be new backhaul techniques and methods there. And with that, they'll have to have some, some new optical uh, networking. So there's already been some optical networking stuff done in TIP. I think we'll see more of that, more on the transport layer, maybe some Rotom stuff the more higher layer optical networking stuff in the future through the TIP project. Through ONF, there's a lot of activity going on there for open networking, not specifically um, 
on hardware, but more of a software layer. So they have uh, CORD, an initiative, central office, re uh, re-architected as a data center. So there's a lot of interest in that. Uh, they partner with OCP uh, hardware providers, so the software and the solution um, brings with it OCP hardware, networking, servers and storage, and the ONF has uh, software and controller type functionality, which they map with that as a complete solution uh, for carriers. So a lot of interest going on there. I think you'll see a lot of cord activity over the next year and some real deployments start to take place over the next year or so based on cord type infrastructure. I think you'll also see the ONF start to work more closely with uh, MEF on carrier ethernet for metro services. Uh, this is something I see just starting uh, with them, and I think we'll see more and more of that over the next year or two years. We're open networking. The hardware side from OCP and also the software side from o ONF really starts to take hold in the metro uh, with carrier ethernet. Of course, there's the Linux Foundation that has a whole host of projects there uh, that will continue to go forward and evolve. Um, OpenSwitch is something that runs on OCP hardware, so OpenSwitch is making a, uh, a comeback after a short uh, time away there over, over last year, so uh, OpenSwitch is here uh, with a booth, so you start to see uh, the new version of OpenSwitch uh, through the Linux Foundation become uh, more and more prevalent, I think, over the next year as an open source alternative for networking gear. And of course, there's some other projects going on um, as far as open source as well, Open Rotom, Mano, those types of things. So there's a lot of activity uh, about open networking in general. A lot of it uh, started in OCP, and we certainly provide the underlying hardware for all the solutions. So you know, we intend to, uh, at EdgeCore, to keep pushing on this and provided, providing open networking solutions, not just in the uh, data center environment, but also for all these other types of new emerging markets for open networking, the campus branch wireless, and also the, uh, the carrier market as well. So that's my talk, short and sweet. Uh, if you have any questions, I can certainly hang around, or we have a booth right down here. We have all the products that I showed here on display. And I uh, hope to see you guys at the booth. Thank you very much.